I'm a uh, abdominal radiologist. I'm a professor of radiology and my areas of expertise are genital urinary radiology. What is a, re a renal LASIK scan and how do we use that to guide clinical recommendations? In a nutshell, a renal LASIK scan helps the radiologist and the clinical team assess whether a patient has an obstructed kidney. That's the nutshell. I'm gonna go through a couple of clinical scenarios and then I'm gonna go back and discuss the details of how a renal LASIK scan is performed. Okay, I'm gonna give a couple of scenarios that are common. Um, a patient may present with a suspected UPJ obstruction. And the urologist or the referring physician wants to know, is this a functional obstruction or is it just sort of a dilated renal pelvis and collecting system that's not obstructed? When we look at all patients, um, everybody fits on a spectrum from a completely normal collecting system to an extra renal pelvis where the renal pelvis sort of prolapses out but the collecting system is normal and caliber. Then the next category would be what I would call UPJ disproportion, where there's a dilated renal pelvis and there's a dilated collecting system, but it's not functionally significant, it's not obstructed. The next one uh, on the list would be a UPJ obstruction. And then the sort of ultimate uh, would be the multicystic dysplastic kidney. Everybody fits on that spectrum somewhere. And you might say, well, why would we be looking at a patient who's 30 or 40 years old with potential UPJ obstruction if they've had it their whole life? It's actually a very interesting question. And I'll give you a few insights. One, if you look at patients that have UPJ um, problems, pain, discomfort, some of them have pain and discomfort that is situational when they drink a lot of fluid or they lie in certain positions. This is important to know because if we're going to be imaging these patients, it's often best that we tell the patient to call us when they're symptomatic and do either their LASIK scan or their CT or their MR at that time. Because sometimes the exact same patient who are dehydrated and have a much lower volume status, their renal pelvis can shrink back down. It doesn't flop over on itself and it's not obstructed. That's one thing. Two, I don't understand this really well, but occasionally patients later in life, the renal pelvis can get more distended, whether it's laxity or fluid distension or cardiac status, nobody really knows. And it flops over just enough to become symptomatic. One thing we as radiologists and you as clinicians need to worry about is if a UPJ becomes symptomatic later in life, are we certain it's a UPJ? And could there be a subtle stricture or malignancy causing that sort of change mid or later in life? Because it's not typical. So that's one of the scenarios. Is it a UPJ obstruction? And where is it on the spectrum? The other scenario that we'll see is a patient with a very dilated collecting system, renal pelvis and ureter from some known past obstruction, a stone, a stricture, a tumor. We'll say the um, referring physicians have treated whatever this problem is. They've dilated the stricture, they've stented, they've excised the mass, and the patient comes back and the collecting system is still dilated. Well, we have to answer the question, is it dilated because it's just flabby and it never went back to normal? Or is it dilated because it's still continuously obstructed? And that's a tricky question. There's also other patients that have dilated collecting systems who are not obstructed. Patients who have a history of reflux nephropathy, patients with diabetes insipidus, 
And there's even some congenital things like megacalices and mega ureter can be problematic. So the main role of the LASIK scan is to take a patient probably with some degree of dilatation somewhere in the system and answer the question, are they dilated and obstructed or are they just dilated? That's the goal of the LASIK renal scan. Now that I've set the scene, I'm gonna go and talk a little bit about how we do a LASIK renal scan. Um, it's often done with um, a, a radionuclide called MAG3. The nice thing about this radionuclide, it's both filtered and excreted. That gives up the filtered information, gives us perfusion information, and the excreted function of the MAG3 gives us functional information on how the kidney is literally collecting the urine and emptying. The perfusion images are usually obtained every 10 seconds for about two minutes. And then the excretion images are obtained every three minutes for about 30 minutes total. At about the halfway point of the excretion, at a 15 minute mark, patients are usually given Lasix. Um, in most adults, it's 40 milligrams or it's one milligram per kilo if the patient is um, uh, smaller. The um, main focus of the Lasix is it really challenges the system. It really optimizes the system by really pushing fluid into the collecting system and seeing how it's going to empty effectively. A normal T1 half, which is a normal time in which half of the radionuclide has exited the kidney is 12 minutes. An abnormal T1 half is 20 minutes. Now you saw there's a difference between the 12 and the 20. And yes, uh, in that eight minute area, there can be um, pe people with partial obstruction. Also people who have really, really dilated systems from prior obstruction, it's hard to get it all out of the collecting system, out of the renal pelvis and into the ureter because that dilated system actually has sort of a reservoir phenomena and it's hard to empty that entire reservoir. So when you're in that in-between area, um, it might involve looking at the images, looking more carefully at some of the curves that are generated. And there's other um, um, markings that the, the nuclear medicine physician will use. Sometimes they'll use total counts in the kidney post void in the numerator and total maximum counts in the kidney when it was maximum and look at that ratio. In a normal, in a normal person, it's usually less than 18 and in obstructed kidneys, it's usually greater than 80. So there's other um, uh, metrics they can use and punch into their computer, but that's basically how we use a LASIK renal scan, how effectively the kidney is emptying and, and um, it's also measuring perfusion, which is how effective the kidney is getting its initial blood flow in the first place. So if it were like a multi-cystic plastic kidney on the perfusion images, well, there would be almost no uptake. So it's both perfusion and excretion, but mainly we're using this for excretion and uh, functionality in a dilated collecting system, ureter and renal pelvis. Thank <laughs> you.